Hello guys, welcome back. In this episode, we're going to have a look at uh, B2C transactions. So let's get straight to it. First of all, before we even start doing the hands-on kind of a thing, I'm going to show you a dry run of what we expect in this episode. So number one, I'm going to send uh, a request to B2C transaction. So right, I've already done this, so I'll just take you through on what you should be able to do on your end so as to achieve the same results. So this is a request that we expect to send, and uh, this is a synchronous response that we'll be getting from M-Pesa. So number one, let us initiate a request. Right, it is successful. So when we come to our callback, it is, right? So this is a kind of a, the asynchronous response that we expect um mpesa to send to our callback url right so let's go back to our code so number one as you have seen is that our request looks something like this and this is our synchronous response so as usual we're going to proceed and create a dto representation of this request now before we proceed i would like to show you should I say quick ways in which you can be able to generate uh, these portions on the fly without maybe taking a lot of time. So let's assume you have uh, this request. So if your IDE is IntelliJ, like uh, what I'm using, go to IntelliJ, then preferences, then under plugins, you can install a plugin called RoboPojo Generator. Now with this plugin, now you can be able now to come to let me let me just create another package just to show you what we expect. I'm just going to click sample. Eventually, we're going to delete this. So once you click that, say new, then generate Pojo from JSON. All right. Then paste the JSON structure that you expect. Here you can give it the name that you want. Maybe we can call it uh, something like. B2C, maybe something like B2C request, right? So here you have various options in which you can use to generate this portal. So in my case, I'm using Jackson. So then you can proceed and generate, all right? Now, once you come back now to your sample package that you've just created, you will be able to see that that extension has already automatically generated the portal for you. So. Number two, if you do not have IntelliJ or maybe you're using any other IDE, what you can also do is just come to the site. It's called json to c .com. So you have two options. You can either convert to a JSON to c -sharp or JSON to Java. So in my case, I am going to use JSON to Java. Now, with the payload that we have for the request, I'm just going to paste it here. And then I'm just going to come and say convert. And there you are. So with this, you are able to get um, a Pojo representation of uh, this JSON, all right? Cool. So the next thing that I would like you guys to do is now generate the Pojos for this structure, all right? And also for this structure. So this is going to be the, the synchronous response. Now, as you have seen on our callback URL, this is a kind of a response that we expect if it was a successful transaction, all right? So you can also do the same thing. Finally, copy. Uh, this is going to be the sample response that you're going to be getting, all right? So with this, proceed uh, the create your portal as expected. So number one, assuming that now you already have those portals, um, we're going to come back to our controller. Let me before that, let us first of all delete this to no longer be, be used to us for now. All right, so there are various items that I would like us to have a look at. And number one is, uh, let us have a look at our application YAML file. So number one, you're going to see that I've introduced some other parameters, which is going to help us when it comes to sending of the B2C. Now, number one thing that I've added is a B2C transaction endpoint, a B2C result URL, the queue timeout URL, 
a b2c initiator name and a b2c initiator password which i've eventually mapped them into our mpesa configuration file you remember this class of ours yeah so this is where now i have come and added those uh, properties which are being mapped to our application yaml all right now once you have all this now at least we have a starting point so the next thing that i did was now to come and set up our callback url okay now we can now do all with this so in our case we want to set our callback url in this case is going to be the, the b2c result url to be slash mobile money slash b2c transaction result all right so if you come and check here this is where the b2c transaction result is all right remember this controller now as you can see this is going to be the b2c transaction asynchronous response the dto that i created all right which is basically a representation of this structure all right so once results have been posted to this endpoint it is going to be mapped to this b2c transaction asynchronous response so this is where i'm just logging the, the response to to make sure that indeed that we are getting the results from mpesa and maybe if i can show you from here here the here or as you can see indeed our callback url is being hit successfully all right so the next thing that we need to have a look at now is then so how do we then initiate a b2c transaction all right so remember our interface the daraja api interface so we expect a b2c transaction synchronous response by this i mean the first time you're going to make a request to a person there is that immediate response that you're going to get once you do that request which in this case is this kind of a representation all right so we expect a b2c transaction synchronous response then we just name the method uh, perform b2c transaction then we have an internal b2c transaction request so let us have a look at the implementation of this of this uh, method so as you can see now the full uh, the full request that needs to be sent to mpesa as you saw it looks something like this let me just paste it here again so that you can understand why i did the way i did it as you can see we have an initiator name security credentials command id we have amount party a party b remarks q timeout url the result url and the occasion all right but as you can see from the endpoint that we exposed we only have command id the amount party b remarks and occasion so the question is where are we getting the other values like now the party a all right q timeout url result url all right where we're getting it now to expose this endpoint we will be able to perform this b2c transaction exposing all these details it will be too much noise why number one we do not want our endpoint it's and every time for somebody to be key in our party a in this case our short code we do not want each and every time for them to be key in the security credentials we don't want them to be key in the q timeout url or even the result url and that is why on our yaml application our yaml file rather we introduced these properties which internally they are going to come and be mapped here so as let us have a look at this internal b2c transaction request by the way this uh, dto is uh, is here under dto's right so this is what we are going to expose to if i may say to the public domain where they'll be able in this case to initiate let's say a b2c transaction then internally we are coming and mapping whatever has been sent from our internal b2c request to now the b2c transaction request that eventually we will send to to mpesa hope that makes sense so 
as you can see the b2c transaction request this is where now we have all those values that safaricom expects all right and it is just from there that we are just coming and saying we are setting the command id to what has been set from our exposed uh, uh, b2c endpoint we're setting the amount but it be remarks and the occasion all right so as for the security credentials i created a helper method which is here and a helper utility then get the security credentials so basically this generates uh the security credentials as dictated by uh mpesa requirements all right so basically this just generates uh the security credentials so you can maybe have a look at it and in case there are any questions or if somewhere where you think you may need some help shoot in the comment section and i will respond so let's proceed so now once we have we've set our security credentials we also set our result url remember which we are getting from our yami file also the same thing applies to our queue timeout url also for the initiator name and also for the party a in this case our short code all right these are the values which are being which are being mapped so maybe if you are, if you are maybe wondering how i did this please watch our previous uh, videos uh, especially from episode two you'll be able to understand more something else that i would like to mention is you definitely do not want to be storing this sensitive information as they are because this introduces some security risks which you really do not want to find yourself uh working on all right so if you'd like us to have a series where we can be able to externalize or basically uh, hide these credentials in a way that it can be safe and secure shoot in the comment section let me know your thoughts and we can be able to have a look at it so but just to mention on an, on a high level overview some of the ways in which you can be able to securely store these sensitive credentials you can use items like kubernetes secrets you can use something like uh, vault or even aws secrets manager or even azure key vault that was just a by the way all right so let's proceed with what we want to achieve in the series so now so this perform b2c transaction is what is now going to call our mpesa b2c transaction endpoint and is going to do as required all right so here we're just basically as you see as you've seen in our previous videos we're just basically doing a request all right we are posting to the b2c transaction endpoint which as i mentioned it is uh, this one right so once we've made a request to that endpoint we then proceed to make uh to wait for the response this is now going to be the the synchronous part we are getting the value and uh once we've gotten the value then we are good to go all right so once that has been done so this is what is being invoked so before this let me show you our controller so the b2c transaction this is the endpoint which which we are hitting right from 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 uh, postman so once you do this request right this is what is being called the b2c transaction which internally calls our daraja uh, implementation to perform a b2c transaction now based uh depending on what result you already did set in my case i did set uh the b2c transaction result powered by ngrok which of course which ngrok is basically a tool that is going to enable you to expose your local host to the public domain once we've done our transaction here it is we expect uh the result to be posted on the url and as you can see this is uh, a result that we have gotten and of course safaricom expects us to acknowledge that indeed we have received uh we have received uh, the payload on our on our callback url so by that you will see in our controller this is the b2c transaction result right so as you can see we are basically responding with an acknowledge response so this acknowledge response let's have a look at it is basically a simple uh, podger with just a message all right so maybe you might be asking yourself as you can see i'm just returning an acknowledge response so where where is this it's here 
so i just did a constructor injection of our acknowledge response which i created as a bin all right so that i do not have to each and every time instantiate this particular DTO just for me to set a success value all right because the only thing we need to do is just tell, tell safaricom okay we've received the payload on our callback url and we're okay all right so and as you, can, as you can see this is how we are responding okay so now with that i think we've pretty much uh, covered the b2c transaction i didn't want this video to be a lengthy one but uh, in case there are any questions clarifications you have better idea by all means shoot in the comment sections let's have that discussion but other than that i think with that we should be good to go so that will be all for this episode as usual please remember to subscribe and turn on the notification bell so as to be notified when a new video has been posted have a good one guys see you in the next one